congregation, turn in your hymnals to number 354 and stand as we sing. gather together today in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray this prayer. It's found from the 130th Psalm. So we'll pray, actually, God's words back. Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my prayers. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? That there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, indeed more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, that he will redeem he will redeem you from all your iniquities. And Father, we pray that you will hear our prayers today, and that you will be with us, and that your spirit will be our comforter. Thank you that you gave the great comfort. And Jesus, you came to bring comfort to us, and we pray today for your comfort. In your name, amen. Please be seated. Let us hear what the Bible and God's holy scriptures testify concerning the corruption of our life and concerning death and judgment. From Psalm 90. Before the mountains were born, or thou didst give birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou hast turned man back into dust, and dost say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a watch in the night. Thou hast swept them away like a flood, and they fall asleep. In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew, toward evening it fades and withers away. So teach us to number our days that we may present to be a heart of wisdom. And then these words, and as, as much as it is appointed, this is from Hebrews, and as, in as much as it is appointed for men to die once, after this comes the judgment. <coughs> And then hear these words concerning the care and the preparedness that Jesus would have us to have. And be dressed in readiness, keep your lamps alight, and be like men who are waiting for their master. When he returns from the wedding feast, so that they may immediately open the door to him. Blessed are those whom the master shall find on the alert when he comes. And then hear these words concerning the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die.
who is also from the book of Corinthians, <coughs> for this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And from the Gospel of John, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Father, as we read your words, we thank you that you have given them to us and that you have that you have revealed yourself to us through your words. We pray that you will bring us comfort as we hear and meditate on your words today. We pray your name. Amen. Gary Vern Hamlin, son of Gilbert and Orr, we say. Hanley was born on December 1st, 1944, at home in rural Radcliffe, Iowa. Gary Pate passed away peacefully, surrounded by family at Mary Greeley Medical Center in Ames, Iowa, on April 13th, in 2024. Salem Lutheran Church was the cornerstone of Gary's faith. Gary was baptized, confirmed, and then united in marriage on February 15th. 1969 to Diane Cole. With God being the foundation, Gary and Diane raised Kara, Wade, and Kay on the family farm. His lifelong passion of farming started at age 11 with his mom and his brother Warren after the passing of their dad. He continued to farm with his son until his last days. Literally farmed with his son until the last of days. Along with growing crops, he took great joy in raising quarter horses for over 35 years. Gary attended Radcliffe Community Schools where he played all sports with his true passion being baseball, which he bonded over with his grandson, Cole. Gary was most proud of his family and he enjoyed nothing more than being together. Between sporting events and show rings, he did miss an event. There was nothing better to him than going to a show to watch his grandson Carson ride the horses that Gary had raised. His kind and caring heart, along with his love for candy. Well, you'd visit Gary and he always offered candy. Sometimes I think it was one piece. Yeah, it's always, always with, along with that. And his grandkids, his love for candy is something his grandkids will always cherish. I think he loved you more than the candy little kid. <laughs> Gary and Diane had a love like no other. Their adventure together included many wild rides, starting with running into a gravel pile just north of the farm driveway with Gary's brand new 67 Chevy. I want to hear that story. There was an ice storm the night before their wedding. And they had hidden their cars so it wouldn't be decorated. They planned a getaway car to drive them from the church, and that ended in a ditch. There's a lot of accidents going on. <laughs> Raising Kara, Wade, and Kay. The 80s farm crisis, the tornado hitting the farm, floods, droughts, the gray hair that came from their rambunctious grandkids, the 10 year battle of Parkinson's diagnosis. Diane never left this side, truly, a love like no one. Gary is survived by his loving wife, Diane, of 55 years, daughter, Kara, and Rand Swanson, son, Wade Hanlon, and daughter, Kay, and Steve Stenstrom. Six grandchildren, Kendra, Cole, Carly, Krista, Swanson, Carson, and Ava Hanlon. Gary is also survived by a brother, Lauren, and his wife, Kathy Hanlon, brothers-in-law, Larry and Ronnie Cole, and David Cole, along with numerous nieces and nephews who we loved dearly. 
Gary was preceded in death by his parents, Gilbert and Laura Hamlin, his sister, Eloise Wilkinson, and Evelyn Jerry and Davis. From being a young teenage drag racing teenager, drag racing cars to daily drives in his gator, Gary didn't miss much around Radcliffe, which he claimed was the greatest place on earth. Gary always welcomed everyone with a firm handshake and a warm smile. Even though Parkinson's tried to take a lot from Gary, his strength, love, and humor never faded. And I might add that in my visits with him, his strength, love, and humor never faded, and I believe his faith grew. didn't fade. Not only did it not fade, it grew in that time. We read a scripture from John, in John 14, and we're going to look at that in a little bit. But three passages of scripture that, that I want to share with you, share with you today. Um, one from Proverbs that, that maybe gives you a picture of Gary's prayer for you. I think of his kids and his grandkids especially, um, but for all of us. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. As, as we hear these words, these words of wisdom written by, by Solomon so many years ago, Words of wisdom, encouragement, and words of hope. Words of do this. And he says, let your heart keep my commandments. As we keep the commandments of God, he says, your days will be good. They'll be longer. They'll be better. Now sometimes we hear in this place that there will be no sickness, there will be no death. That's not the reality of life. Gary faced sickness and illness, as we all know. But he faced it following these words. Following these words. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Do not forget. Do not forget to love. Do not forget your faith in Christ. One of my favorite stories that I've heard over the days and weeks of Gary's life is Diane sharing sharing about one of their practices. At night they would pray. They would pray together. And Gary would say, let's remember so and so. Because one of Gary's favorite phrases, he said to me many times, he would say, I'd say, how are you doing? I said, well, I'm okay. He said, there's I have a little pain today, or I have this, but, and then he would name somebody, a loved one, somebody in the community, but they have it worse. There's always somebody. I shared with the family earlier that we could love like that. That we could get out of our own self and love each other like that. And so as they would pray, he'd say, let's remember so-and-so and let's pray for them. What a story. What a testimony for you as a family to model and to share. We talked the family, they shared that, and Carson said, Grandpa had a lot of things to emulate. Faithfulness, love, let them be a part of our life. These words are encouragement to us. 
do not forget this teaching. Do not forget the teaching of faithfulness. Do not forget the teaching of love. Oh, what a, what a world we live in today where faithfulness and love have been thrown out. Right? We are so divided as people. Are we not? One candidate can say, let's do this. And the other one will say, oh, that's a dumb idea. And then the next leader will come and say, let's do this. And this candidate will say, oh, that's a dumb idea. Right? Because we're divided. We're divided as a people. We don't know. We're, we've forgotten what's right and wrong. We don't love. God says, do not forget these words. Do not let faithfulness and love be taken from you. From, from the book of Thessalonians. It says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. That doesn't tell us don't mourn. He doesn't say don't grieve, but he says there is a grief and there is a mourning that has hope within it. And that hope is found in Jesus Christ. He says here, he says, I don't want you to be uninformed about those who have gone before, but grieve with hope. And today, 55 years in the hand is a long time. Well done. There's hope. There's hope not, not because Gary was a great dad, a great grandfather, a great husband. He was by accounts. There's hope because of Jesus. There's hope today. He gives that and he says, I don't want you to grieve as one without hope. The one who does not have Jesus, he is saying, does not have hope. God's words for us. There is, there is a passing, a stepping from this life to the next. When we breathe our last here, we breathe our first there. In the Gospels, he says that that there that that we do not that we that when we come to Jesus, that we pass from light or from darkness into light, into hope. John 14. We read those verses a little bit ago. And then Jesus said, You guys know the way. And his disciples said, oh, Jesus, how do we know the way? We don't even know where it is that you're going. We don't know where heaven is. How can we know the way there? And Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He is the way. In a little bit, we're going to take a route. Not the exact route that Gary took, but he had a he had a route that he took pretty much daily. Out to the farm, around the farm, out to wait. Look to see if the cows, wait, you're doing a good job. If Wade was there, he'd stop and tell me, you know, we need to get this done, or this, or that. We're just chat. But he'd make his route. There was a way, and a way to go, a direction to go. He made that route daily. There's a way for you to go. There's a way for you to go. And Jesus says, I am the way. And then he says, I am the truth. You can count on his words because they're true. He's truth. They're dependable. 
they're reliable, they're accurate, they've never been wrong. And then he says, I am the life. See, Gary is more alive today than any of us gathered here. In Jesus, there is eternal life. Apart from Jesus, not so much. There's God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you go, if you breathe your last, trusting Him, there's life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray that today, that you would, your Son, Jesus, we pray that you will bring us life. We pray that you will that you will give us your grace, that we will believe, that we will be faithful, that we will, and that we'll cling to you. Jesus, we pray. We pray for your comfort and your peace, for the Hamlin family and extended family and friends today. And we pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen.
And then the next sweetie is saying, 